It's good to see everybody. We are here tonight to talk about Mexico missions, something this church has been uh, involved in for 20 some odd years. And uh, we want to talk about where we've been a little bit tonight, but also some things of the future of where I hope and pray we can go and uh, in expanding this mission and reaching uh, our uttermost parts of the world for Christ. But let's begin our time together tonight with just a word of prayer. And so if you don't mind, bow your heads with me and let's pray together. Father, thanking you for this evening and our time together. Thanking you for all of the blessings, Father, that you have given to us. The way that, Father, you have touched each and every one of our lives, Father. Blessings that we do not deserve, but you have given to us because of your great love for us. But, Father, you love everybody. And you have called us as your children to share the gospel both here at home and around the world. And I thank you, Father, for the ministry of, of Sinai Baptist Church and what it has meant here at Friendship Baptist Church and how this church has for many years, Father, come together and ministered and shared the gospel and how it has made a difference uh, in this community in Mexico. And so I pray your blessings uh, over all that we talk about tonight, I pray your blessings, Father, over future endeavors that we may have to share the gospel even more. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, tonight, if you look there, uh, how many folks have ever been to Mexico to Sinai Baptist Church? A few of you have. I don't know if it looked like uh, this uh, the church, the front of the church, shall I say, looked like this the last time you went or not. Uh, but as me and Mr. Charles went earlier this spring, that's what the front of the church looks like. Now, this church for many years have been traveling to Matamoros, Mexico, just past Brownsville, Texas. Uh, a few miles over the border there helped to build this church from scratch. And uh, for years we have been doing vacation Bible school. Uh, some of the pictures that you'll see coming up here as well. Uh, go ahead, Terry. You'll see some of the decorations that they actually put up for this. Uh, it really just was pre-COVID now for the vacation Bible school that we went to there. This, of course, as well as the inside of the church. Go ahead. Uh, that's their podium area there and uh, some more decorations that they had. Go ahead, Terry. And then this is uh, the pastor in the back, his son there to the right. Uh, the gentleman we had mentioned last week, his brother-in-law who passed away, who's also a pastor, that is actually a picture of him. I know you can't see his face, but in the green shirt, that is the pastor uh, that also passed away there. Go ahead. Uh, here are some of the children as they began to come in to the church. I uh, just want you to know something. When uh, Friendship Baptist Church goes to Mexico when we go down there to do a vacation Bible school. Uh, there are children everywhere. Uh, you know, we go down and, and the numbers get a little bit bigger each and, uh, and by the end of the week, not only do we have children, they actually have adults that are involved in their vacation Bible school as well. And so there are some of the kids that are coming in. And go ahead. Uh, that is their pastor and some of the kids. You see they've got their flags out. Uh, they're getting ready just as we do in our vacation Bible school, present our flags and the Bible and such. They are getting ready to do that as well. Okay? He's got his Bible out. We're doing... Uh, I, I don't speak Spanish, but it's amazing how you can listen to people, you know, repeating something that you know what they're saying, even though it's in another language. And so they're giving their pledge to the Bible there during that time. Go ahead. This is some of the leaders and the adults uh, presenting to the kids. Just a, a little fun time there with some singing and dancing and other things that they were doing there. Okay. Uh, some of the crafts that we uh, take with us. These are some of the kids actually putting some of those headbands, those little visors together, decorating them as well. Uh, whether you realize it or not, this church provided through the years numerous uh, kinds of crafts and activities and things uh, for these hundreds of children to do uh, while they were down there. And so here are some of the kids just putting those crafts together, okay? Uh, oh, I don't know how that got in there. Uh, hey, it's a fun time. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead and laugh, Naomi. Everybody can hear you. Uh, it's a fun time. That's the pastor, our, our brother Alfonso, the pastor of the church there, and I. And uh, they wanted to take a picture, and I'll take a picture, I guess. So uh, go ahead to the next one, though. All right. Uh, this is well, Miss Pam. Uh, everybody, I just most everybody knows Miss Pam here tonight, Brother Charles's daughter, and she, of course, is very instrumental in uh, making sure that all of these mission activities, all of these things work. Uh, and last time we went, she presented a new Bible to uh, Brother Angel there on the right in, in the white shirt, the gentleman who passed away, and then Brother Alfonso in the red shirt there, and uh, they were excited. Uh, to receive a, a new copy of God's Word that she had for them. Okay? Uh, here's some of the outside area of the church. These are just some of the kids. Go ahead and roll a, another picture or two there, Terry. They're outside and they're just playing. And uh, here's a, a picture uh, of this last trip that we did. You see all of these containers. Uh, Miss Pam and others helped put all of these little grab bag things together and here we are one afternoon after Bible school has happened that day. Uh, on the last day, we always have uh, bags that we hand out. And here uh, the group is putting all of those bags together. Uh, as we made our way into the country, all of this stuff was kind of hidden <laughs> up under the seats and everywhere else in, in the church van. Uh, not that there's anything bad about what we brought, but honestly, when we got to the border, we didn't want them to take them from us. And, uh, and sometimes you have to kind of be careful of some of those situations like that. But we made it through, everything got there, and we were able to put these bags together. Go ahead. And you'll see uh, in this picture, I think there's a couple of more there, pictures too, Terry. One more time as well, yeah. Just hundreds of bags that we made. These bags had school supplies in them, had little toys in them, had little, uh, just things that, that a lot, be honest with you, a lot of us, even our smaller children, would kind of take for granted. Uh, but these kids don't take anything for granted. You know, you, you hand them a pack of pencils and they think like, wow. You know, you give them some, uh, a notebook or a couple of notebooks and some things like that and, and they're amazed, okay? It is a different world uh, when you drive across the border. It's a different world, a different group of people. They love the Lord, praise the Lord, but it is a different, different economic setting to say the least. Go ahead. Uh, I took that on purpose. Uh, you know, it was hot, it was tiring, and Brother Alfonso wanted to take a little nap. Next one uh, is, this is how you, she takes a nap with a sucker in her mouth and uh, having a good time there. And then here are the kids, just a few pictures of some of the different kids uh, getting, uh, getting their bags. They came in in different age groups. Go ahead. Uh, this guy here... <laughs> He loved his glasses with the little funny nose there. All right. Some others coming in. And one more time, I believe. Yeah, just from, you know, from kids that are four or five years old all the way up to those would be the sixth or seventh grade, something like that. Uh, they all enjoyed and appreciated what this church has done for 20-something for years. Go ahead. And then here is the group. There's Brother Charles you see there in the middle. Uh, and, and honestly, we don't know how to speak Spanish, so we don't go down to teach them vacation Bible school. We go down to help them lead their own vacation Bible school. And here is a group picture uh, from our last trip down. Uh, all of these are some adults and some of their teenagers and such. Uh, and these are the folks who helped to lead their vacation Bible school. They did the games. They did, you know, they taught the Bible stories. They did the music. They did all of those things. We were just there to help support them, uh, to kind of give them some help. There's no way that that church could have reached out in that community to 150 or some odd kids uh, without our help. And uh, it was a blessing to be able to do that. All right. Leads us back there. At this time, I want to ask Brother Charles if you will come forward and share what God's put on his heart tonight, but also just to give a lot of you here tonight an idea of what Mexico Missions, how it started, and really what it's all about. In Matthew chapter 28, we're all familiar with verses 19 and 20, which says... 
Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even to the end of the world. This is what friendship has been doing for the last 20 plus years. We've been going and sharing Jesus with people in Matamoros, Mexico. For a lot of you, you may not know how uh, Sinai Baptist came into existence. In 1996, some of you are remember, there are several of you here that went on that first mission trip we had to Mexico from Friendship Baptist Church. Brother Guy organized a trip, and we went with Brother Joe Young from Charleston at Calvary Baptist Church. He had been going for quite a number of years and did a lot of work in Mexico and is still going. But whenever we went that year and we came back, Brother Guy said that Friendship Baptist Church needed to build a church there, that we needed to go and minister to the people there in that community. So in 1998, Brother Guy, Ted Coates, and myself met with Brother Juan Blanco who was the missionary in Matamoros, Mexico, to look at starting a church there. And we went down, and he had found a property, a piece of land that was available. And we met with him and made all the arrangements, and Friendship sent the money, a little over $2,000, to buy that property to build the church where it's at today. And you see the pictures of where it's located. And we started, whenever we got back, we started making plans to build that church. Of course, we knew it was going to take a lot of money, and we hadn't, hadn't did a whole lot of planning ahead to know how we were going to come up with the money to build the church there, but God was always in it, and he knew that friendship needed to build that church. And in 1998, when my brother died, Tom, he had already made a provision in his will for a charity donation. And I had convinced him that that donation needed to go to Friendship Baptist to build that church in Matamoros. And we were able to take that money with what Friendship, and you see the building today that's there, and there's been even more buildings than that. So... We brought, bought the land in 1994, and they, we sent money down to start, and they started on the church, and we held our first vacation Bible school there on the property in 1998, and we carried a tent. Some of you may remember, if you went, we carried a tent and had it under a tent. There was no building there to uh, provide a place for us to uh, use for a vacation Bible school. But we did that in 1998. They started on the building, and it took them almost a year to get it uh, out of the ground. And we went back in 2000 with Friendship Baptist from Sturgis and Friendship Baptist here in Grenada. We went back and finished the inside of the church completely in a week. We took all the materials, we took all the windows, the doors, all the sheetrock, everything that we needed to finish the church, and we finished it in one week's time. And you, it's strange how God works things out, you know, because he had a hand in it, and you, if you were there, you would fully understand, because we arrived there on Monday morning to put up the ceiling, all the doors, windows, and everything, and there was no slab poured. Well, we didn't know how we was going to be able to do all the work we needed to do, but Brother Alfonso had told us that it would be done. Well, we unloaded all our material, got everything situated, and whenever we come back the next morning, the slab was poured. They poured that slab at 1 o'clock in the morning. Down there, things work a little different here. You get on the list for concrete, and it's 24 hours a day. And whenever your time comes up, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, you better be ready to pour concrete because that's when it's coming to you. And when we got back the next morning, the slab was finished, 
and we were able to completely finish the inside of that building before we left that week. So God has a strange way of doing his bills, doing his business for his people. Ever since 1998, except for 2008, we didn't go and do a Bible school because Brother Bob's wife, Miss Nancy, passed away. And in 2011, we didn't go and do one because of the cartel was very, very active in that area and it was too dangerous to go. And then, of course, we didn't go in 20 and 21. But all the other years we have been there providing Bible school for all those children. And it's been a tremendous blessing to see how the church has grown. And the biggest transformation that I've seen in the church since we started it 20 plus years ago, if you've ever been to Mexico and you know the culture there, it's a very inclusive con culture. They only care about themselves. They don't reach out to people. And this way the Sinai operated for probably 10 or 12 years. They only ministered to just a handful of people that they liked. But we kept going and we didn't minister that way. We just went and we loved everybody. We had a lot of friends that weren't going to church there, but we always visited them and we cared for them and we helped them. And over the years, in the last seven, eight years, the church has made a transformation. And now it's not about who's coming to church there. It's about how we can take those people and reach out to everyone available in that community. And they are. They have, they have really extended their ministry. During the course of time, of course, when we first went, Brother Angel, uh, Brother Alfonso's son, Angel, was about two years old. And through the progression of what we've been able to give them and how we've supported them, he's been able to go all the way through medical school, and now he's a doctor. And his daughter wasn't even born when we started going, but she's always been there since we've always been there. And she has went through medical school, and she's a nurse. And now God is really blessing them with a tremendous outreach through medical ministry there in Matamoros. They go and do medical ministries, but whenever they go, they carry the gospel with them. And they, I think Brother a uh, bro uh, Dr. Angel, I think he's able to reach more people through the medical field than he would if he was a pastor because people need medical care. And if you provide the medical care, then they'll come for the spiritual side of it. And that's what we've seen over the years. And this is what uh, we hope to start doing in the future, you know, because there's a tremendous outreach down there now through the medical end of it. Because another thing that took place too, uh, I think it was about five years ago when the missionary there, uh, Brother Juan Lombario, got Brother uh, Alfonso to register the church with the state of Mexico, with the, uh, the country. And once he did that, it gave him a lot of opportunities. The state, Mexico, is a lot different than the United States. They really appreciate their churches. And whenever he registered the church there with the state, he gets some government benefits from it, but also it gave him the opportunity to go anywhere he wants to in the country of Mexico. He can go into prisons, he can go into any business, any government entities, anywhere he wants to go in the state of Mexico, he can go because he's a pastor. That's how much they think of their pastors there. Wouldn't it be nice if it was that way here in the United States? So through the years we've seen a tremendous growth there 
And we'll never know this side of heaven how many people we've impacted there. I know we've impacted a lot of children's lives. We made a lot of children happy. But I think also we have shared the gospel. And as you go and, and, and you continue to go, we have kids that were there 20 years ago, and now they're married and their children are coming. So it's an ongoing generation thing that continues to grow. And we just pray that we'll be able to go back this October and even make plans for next summer to go and do a vacation Bible school. As Brother Tim is going to show and share with you later, there's two areas we went to that I'd never been. And if you want to see poverty, you go and visit these areas. You, you won't see anything like it in the United States of America. These people, they don't live from day to day. They live from hour to hour. Most of them don't know where their next meal is coming from. Most of them don't know if they're going to have a place to live in whenever they lay down at night. They've started a ministry, and Brother Tim will share with you what we were able to witness. They've started a ministry on a group of islands that are probably, what, 100 yards off the coast of Mexico. And there's all kinds of people that live there. And their own sole occupation, the only thing they have to do to make a living is fishing. That's their sole means of income. The children, the only education they get is once a week a teacher comes to the mainland there and they come in and she teaches the ones that come. Most of them are generations that's been there for generations and there's no way for them to get out. And the only thing they can do is continue fishing and hoping to catch enough, make a little money and live. And there is no water, there's no sewer system, none of that's available on the island. They have to bring their drinking water from the mainland and everything else is just bare bone living. But then we went to another area that was in Mexico and they called it the garbage dump and that's exactly what it, it used to be, but now people are living there. They make a house out of whatever they can scrap up, whether it's a little bit of lumber, cardboard, whatever they can put together. And you would think, you know, we're not talking about 15 or 20 people, two or 300 living like that. But they're all so responsive to the gospel. They want to hear the gospel. And whenever you go and they do a medical mission, the people show up, but they want to hear the gospel as much as they want to be healed because it's not available for them. There's no churches there. Nobody cares about them. This is the first time that area has been ministered to forever. Nobody cares about the people there. But Brother Alfonso and Brother Angel and Genesis and their whole family, they care about those people and they know there's a need there. And they can meet that need. And with the help of Friendship Baptist Church, we can help meet that need too. We can either go ourselves or we can help them financially. And we've done that. Friendship has really provided so much for the growth of that church there. And you'll see in a lot of the videos that uh, we take from year to year how it impacts the lives of the people there. And I was sharing with Brother Tim, you know, when we went there in 1998, the area is completely different now than what it was when we went there. A lot of it looked like the same place we called the garbage dump. But I think because of the presence of God in that church, in that community, it is instilled in the people that they can help themselves and do better 
and make a better life for themselves, and they all have. There's nice homes there to live in now. The streets are paved. They have water, sewer. And I think the presence of that church has really changed their lives and their living conditions tremendously. Maybe we can do the same thing with a ministry through them and help them on that island down there to help those people, to share with them the love of God because they need it so desperately. Because like I say, nobody cares about them. Nobody. So be in your prayers for as we make plans to go again. As Brother Tim's going to share with you, we have some opportunities coming up hopefully in October, and then make plans to go back next year. I am going to give you a few moments uh, at the end to ask some questions, things like that, if you, if you have any of those. But let's, uh, let's look at a few pictures that I have and kind of continue there. Uh, this is Sinai Baptist Church after a, a good hard rain. Probably something like we had yesterday uh, around parts of Grenada. Now, the sanctuary itself is made out of blocks. Uh, but some of the other buildings have been made, you know, put up. And, and uh, they may have a, a concrete slab, but they're wood. And, uh, and because of that, I had asked Sunday for our church to take our offering, uh, our fifth Sunday offering this quarter, and instead of doing benevolence, and we have money in our benevolence, don't, don't worry about that, but to give to Mexico and to Mount Sinai so they can rebuild a building uh, that has now been torn down. Uh, and it's because of stuff like this. Uh, those wooden structures over a period of time can't take it. Uh, your generosity Sunday uh, I'll be honest, I, I was kind of blown away uh, by how much our church gave. It, it just proves to me that there is a love and a willingness in this church for Mexico. And, uh, and I'm glad that there is. And uh, so I pray that it will not only be a financial gift, but also some people gifts as well, uh, desiring to go. But our, our offering... Uh, Sunday morning was five thousand three hundred and seventy-one dollars. You know, uh, normally, honestly, normally for a, a benevolence fund, that fifth Sunday altar offering that we come down, it's fifteen hundred dollars, maybe something in that area there, two thousand at the most. So we blew that away, yeah, but I knew it was something special, and you guys are something special. And I appreciate that. Go on to the next one there. Now, <clears throat> this is the inside of the old building that used to be there. Now, all that's there now is a, is a concrete slab, the slab that this building used to be a part of. Now, the money that we raise, we're going to help them buy cement blocks, you know, cinder blocks, and uh, help them. They, they have a lot of folks in that church who know how to put up blocks, okay? And so help, they'll get the walls and different things up, and hopefully we can go back down later on and maybe put a roof on it for them or help them do that, some windows, doors, whatever the case may be. Go ahead and show another one there. They were actually, guys, this was their adult Sunday school room. You know, their building there. Uh, walk back here if you haven't and see how nice we have it here. I mean, it's daylight and dark, is it not? I mean, I, I know we live in a different country. We are truly blessed. But these are God's people as well. And so the remains of this building, it's no longer there. It's just a slab there now. And with the finances and money that you gave and other support that this church has done through the years, we're going to help them put a concrete block building there uh, that they can use again as Sunday school rooms. And, uh, and just, you know, so the adults will have a place to go uh, as well. Go ahead, Terry. Now... What we would like to do in October, and I've somehow in my pictures, I thought I had a picture of the actual building itself. This building here uh, is, is their nursery and children's building, small children area there. It's, one, it's a building uh, that, that, that has two rooms to it. One is their kind of bed baby nursery. 
They actually do have an air conditioner in that room. That's a praise the Lord kind of moment. And uh, then another room next to that, which is kind of ironic. They don't have a lot of air conditioner down there. They cut a hole in the wall and got a fan that blows air from the one side to the other. Uh, but this building, this building needs a roof on it. Uh, it has a shingle roof on it now. And we, when me and Mr. Charles had went down this spring, we measured and looked at that. There's a lot of cornice work. You'll see a corner here. Go ahead again. There's another corner of that same building. Keep going. Uh, that's the back side. You see part of it's missing there. Go one more time, I think, uh, as well. And so there is some, some roof work that we would like to try to do this October, sometime this fall, going down to work on this building. If we can put a new roof on it, it'd be a metal roof. Okay, so we won't have to worry about yanking off shingles and going and stuff like that. Get to go up a lot quicker. We want to be able to go down and, and work two or three days and then come back home all in the same week. Uh, those things of that nature. But with all the heat and everything else, we also just believe that a tin roof in the long run uh, will last longer, to be honest with you. And, uh, and so that's our project that we want to try to do this fall for anybody that would like to go with us. Listen, you've got to have a passport. Okay, if you don't have a passport, get you one. Young people, kids, youth, if you want to go, you know, you can go. There's, there's going to be all kinds of opportunities, I hope and pray, in the future for all age groups to be able to go down. Uh, but it does take a passport to be able to get across the border. That's just the way things are there. And go ahead again. This is actually a different building. Uh, one more picture there as well, I believe. Uh, again, the same, the corner, there's actually a shed that connected two buildings, kind of a flat roof. They tore that down because it was falling apart. Uh, and then this ease is, is kind of left open like that. Uh, I don't know if we can do that in October. We may have to do that at a different time. Either way, there are, are some projects down there from a construction standpoint that uh, we would be willing and able to help them with. Uh, they, they are willing and do help themselves, uh, but let's be honest, uh, we can do more and we can do it a lot quicker uh, with our availability if we can. And so there's another picture there. Go on to the next one uh, as well. One more time. All right, next, next idea is Mr. Charles had talked about medical missions. Here's, I had, was able to pull up off of Brother uh, Afonso's page one more time as well. Uh, this is them doing a medical mission opportunity. Again, he had mentioned that, uh, that Brother Alfonso, excuse me, his son is a doctor, his daughter is a nurse, and then Brother Angel, who passed away just a, a week or so ago, his son is actually finishing up dental school. And so it's kind of amazing that in this small group of, of family here, they've got a doctor, a nurse, and a dentist that uh, can travel together and do travel together uh, and ministering to other parts of Mexico, other areas of their city. Uh, I tell you what, I, I think that's one of the blessings of what this church has done for Sinai Baptist Church and in that community. We have enabled this church, this not friendship, but this church, Sinai, to be a mission-minded church to go out and share the gospel, to go out and try to reach others and, and to make a difference as well. Uh, go ahead as well. Uh, Brother uh, Charles told you we were able to go out on one of the islands. It is a little fiberglass boat that we all piled into. Uh, the, no waves or anything like that, so it wasn't really dangerous as well. Go ahead. Uh, sticks. Uh, he had mentioned to you that they were fishermen they have a very unique way of catching fish or shrimp, things of that nature. All of these sticks, we had actually was just kind of walking across a small little pier there. Uh, these sticks were all lined up. They use these sticks as they fish. Uh, the next picture, uh, I'm not sure if you're able to quite figure that one out, but that all those sticks, it makes a little V, and they've got a little space there where it comes together, not quite as wide as, as this uh, aisle is here, maybe about half as wide as this aisle, and they've got nets that run around the, you know, just above the water. They stick out and go to the bottom, and it's somehow they just, all of these fish and shrimp just kind of funnel into that small little area, and that's how they catch. 
their fish and their shrimp. Eh? There's a lot of shrimp uh, that is caught there. We saw remnants of, uh, of some of that is uh, small shrimp, baby shrimp. I don't know what to call that, mini shrimp even. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's what they catch. That's what they try to survive on on these islands as well. Go ahead. Uh, just a few pictures here one more time as well. Uh, this is their convenience store out on the water. You see the water bottles that are there. The next one, uh, that's actually the Walmart store. Did y'all think I was serious or y'all just didn't think it was funny enough to laugh? Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Uh, basically, for those on the island, if they want to go shopping, if they need anything like water or whatever, they do go to these little floating uh, stores, I guess you would say. The water is all bottled water. There is no electricity or anything on the islands. Uh, we did see in a couple of spots some, I guess the government may have provided them with a few little solar panels and things of that nature to build up uh, enough electricity to have a light bulb running or, or something along that line as well. Go ahead. This is on one of those islands was, was a small little church that they had. Now, this is one of the areas that uh, uh, Dr. Angel, I guess now, he and some of those family members would go to this church uh, and do medical missions as well as sharing the gospel. What's the next one there? I believe maybe the inside of that little church. Uh, and that's, that's that. And then one more picture, I think it's the outside. Just a small little building there in the middle of an island that you had to walk across to get to. And all of these folks live around the outside edge of the island. Uh, and they fish. And they, they live in places that we would only imagine. Uh, we went to actually two islands. I think the next picture is a nigger church on a different island. This church actually uh, had had a pastor for quite some time. But he has now passed away. Uh, his wife is kind of living there still. They don't have a pastor, don't have anything, but it is a building that they can use for medical missions and things uh, like that as well. What's next? All right, this is uh, getting into, into the garbage dump. Now, for us to go there and uh, to go to the islands, just to be real honest with you, it's getting into Matamoros, doing all the things we knew that need to do there, and then taking probably an hour and a half drive just get to the coast, then getting everything on a little bitty boat, then getting it out to an island. I mean, it's, it's an adventure, to say the least, okay? Uh, there are some other groups. There's another group out of Texas, I believe, that does come and go out to the islands, uh, has started that with, uh, with Angel and some of those. But now this is... Uh, a church that's located on the edge of what we call the garbage dump. Uh, this is an area which I can see us as a church family doing some uh, one-day or two-day Bible schools while we also do a one-day or two-day medical mission. Here's the inside next picture of that church. One more time as well. When we went there, there were actually people, they're cleaning the church. They had their little... Uh, brooms out, they were sweeping the floors. Hey, that's... I know we look at that and think, wow, but they look at that and think, wow. You know, there's a roof on that place. You know, it's actually a shade. Uh, and it is an opportunity for us to be there. Uh, if we've got folks that are willing to go and help and, and minister as well. I know we have folks in our church who are nurses who work with dental aspects and, and other aspects of of medical ministry, uh, we can go there and do things there just to help people, uh, hand out medicine, do, you know, vitamins, some of the basic things that we take for granted uh, can be life-saving for this group, folks, uh, folks here. Go to the next picture. This is across the street from that church. It's their little playground area, uh, not really associated with the church. It's just there. Uh, and if we do something at that church, it's, it's a field that we can use to reach out and maybe minister to the kids while, while other things are happening inside the building. One more picture of that, and then let's go to the next picture. <clears throat> this is right outside of the church as well. That's where people live. Okay? That's a home. 
in this area of Mexico. Uh, as Brother Charles said, it is totally different than where Sinai Baptist Church used to be. I think, you know, from what I understand, a lot of that surrounding area at Sinai used to look like this. Uh, when we went that day, uh, the pastor, of course, was there with us, and he said, listen, guys, we're just going to drive through the community. He said, we're not going to stop. Of course, it was all dirt roads and bumps and potholes and all that. He said, we're not going to stop. He said, not because it's dangerous. He says, but if we stop and get out, people are going to think we're there to help them or do something. And he said, we'll be overrun before you know it. You know, he said, so we're just not going to get out. We're going to just drive around. And so driving around inside of the car, here's a couple of pictures uh, that I made. There's another, uh, again, just driving through this little, we would call it just a big open field area. Uh, there were basically little roads, I guess, back and forth that they had created themselves. Go ahead. Uh, they, they like fences over there. Uh, you put a fence up. You put a fence up to protect what belongs to you, per se. And if you put a fence up, everything inside of that fence is yours. And so they put a fence up. They, they want to protect. They don't want anybody to steal. Uh, Brother uh, Alfonso told us that a lot of the people who who work, or excuse me, who live here are actually the people who go around the city and pick up garbage. They do not have garbage pickup, okay? Uh, if you live in our area, uh, you go home on Wednesday nights and you put the garbage out because in the morning they're supposed to come by our house and pick up garbage. You got a garbage can, we put it in. Got garbage bags, all that kind of stuff. In Mexico, garbage just gets thrown out. Or you pay somebody to come by and get it if you, if you have a little money, I guess you would say. But these folks ride around. They may have a cart that they pull by hand or maybe even a cart that they pull or drag, you know, have a little horse or donkey or something that pulls this cart around. And they'll just go up and down the streets and they'll look for stuff. And if they think they can help build their fence, I mean, guess what? They pick it up. If they think they can help build their house, guess what? They pick it up. If they think they can sell it to somebody else and get a few pesos out of it, guess what? They pick it up. You know, if somebody pays them to haul stuff off, guess, yeah, they'll, you know, give me some money. I'll haul off your garbage and uh, pretty much know where it ends up. I mean, it's, it's a tough spot, you know, not, not trying to paint a picture that's not real here. It's, it's a tough spot. Go to the next one. Uh, I mean, this guy actually had a, had a chain, not a chain link fence, but he had a fence of some kind of wire type fence. Uh, that was one of the nicer houses in this whole area. I mean, that kind of looks like one of the sheds that we may have in our backyard, you know, out on the farm to, to put uh, Christmas stuff in that we'll never use again. That, that's kind of what that is there. That's a family home in this part of Mexico. All right. And leading us back to uh, what's next. Well, Let's be honest. There's a few things that we can do. We can always give money. And that's good. If that's all we can do, that's fine. But I'll be honest with you. Well, I'm, I, I'm not necessarily looking for our church to say, okay, let's give them ten or $20,000 a year and we'll send them a bunch of money and they can take care of it. That's not what I'm looking for us to do. I'm looking for those who are still able to and willing to get a passport. Let's go to Mexico. Let's take a little time out and do the things that we can do. Okay? Young people, any age, to go down there and be a part of vacation Bible school, you can do that. Some in our medical fields, to go down and spend just a few days. Okay? Yeah, it's a good trip down there. It's a good trip back. But within a two or three day period, you can accomplish more down there, I think, than a lot of folks do working a whole year here in America. And you're definitely going to run into folks who appreciate what's being done for them. We got folks who know how to drive a nail. And not only, I didn't show other pictures, but, uh, you know, Brother Charles had talked about friends that they've made and things of that nature. 
not only do we have an opportunity, I think, to help the church and do some things at the church, but uh, there's some families down there. If we wanted to go down there and spend a, three or four days, we could go down there and change a whole family's life by helping them put a roof on a block building or that's their house. Okay. Uh, we can change lives and not only change lives from a human standpoint, folks, we can share the gospel and change lives for an eternal standpoint. And so these last few pictures, uh, Brother Alonzo and his wife Tara, uh, pray for them. Whether you've realized it or not, as a church family, we've been connected to it. He's been there from the beginning, right? From the very beginning. This guy has been the pastor of Sinai Baptist Church. And he has given his life for that community. And now giving his life to reach out from that community and share the gospel with others. <coughs> Man, what a blessing. Pray for him. Pray for his wife. That was her brother that passed away last week. Uh, her mother passed away because of COVID during the COVID era. You know, this family, they're, they're struggling just like everybody else. But we pray for them. The next picture is their daughter named Genesis. Uh, she was born after uh, Friendship Baptist Church got involved uh, with this church and this church family. And for those of you know, who know Ashley Weaver and her daughter named Genesis, that's the young lady she was named for as well. And then the next picture, last picture that I've got, uh, that is Angel. Dr. Angel, I guess now. That sounds kind of funny to call him that. Uh, man, he loves the Lord. He really does. He loves people. Uh, when COVID was going on around in that church and in that community, there's no telling how many people, he and his sister, how many lives were saved because he would go house to house in that community taking care of folks who had COVID. It was, you know, he, he just has a heart. And folks, those are the, those are the kind of folks... Uh, I want this church to wrap its arms around and love on and help share the gospel to our uttermost parts of the world. We've made a commitment 20-something years ago. Uh, I want to ask our church family to recommit for another 20-something years to see what God can do, which is even bigger and better. So last thing, Brother Tim, what do I need to do? Number one, if you want to go and you don't have a passport, you need to get a passport. Okay, I think you can go by the post office and do most of that now. I think they do the picture for you in the whole nine yards. Yeah, it's going to cost you a little money, but it's for 10 years and it's worth it and you just need a passport anyway. You may want to go somewhere else one day. Get you a passport. You want to go in October, we need to know that pretty soon. I would love to have at least five or six folks who's willing to do some construction to go down in October. Maybe even a couple of others who would be willing to go down and do some little canvassing work. And I know Ms. Palm is supposed to meet us down there because if next year rolls around and we're going to do some uh, vacation Bible school and we're going to do some medical missions, we need to kind of begin to really work on what that entails. And so we might need a little help involved in that. And if you're willing to go, we just need to know. And then next year, there's going to be a couple of opportunities, two or three, hopefully, opportunities for us to go to Mexico for a, a week. Okay? Whether I'm able to go to all of them or not, I don't know. Whether Brother Charles is able to go to every one of them, I, I don't know. But, man, there's a lot of opportunities to go down there and help and meet needs and do things along that line. We will plan, Lord willing, a vacation Bible school, both at this church, like we've always done, but I'd love to have a satellite somewhere else as well. If we get enough people to go, we can do that. So you pray about what God would have you do, to be involved in any way possible. Yes, financially, 
Yes, prayerfully. Yes, going yourself, whatever it may take, whatever you may be willing to do. All right, it's getting close to our time, but I want to stop for a moment and ask if you have any questions tonight. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yeah, if, if, if you're willing to go, we're willing to find something for you to do while you're there. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. 73 years old, you got on the roof. I see, we, no age limits. The only, only, only requirement for getting on the roof we have is that you don't fall off. At least y'all laughed at that one. Have somebody catch you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. What happens with the hurricane? What happens to what? Anything. Anything? Well, that is one reason why we want to go to block buildings. They, they are able to survive the hurricane. I don't have pictures uh, of another building that was there, but if you remember some of the pictures I've shown you of the kids standing under a lean-to area, well, that building as well now has become so worn out because of the flooding, flash flooding, and it's, and it's just wood that uh, probably in the next few years we're going to we're gonna have to tear that one down or actually let them tear it down, and then we may have to help them try to put it back together uh, into something that's more stable. Uh, they just, you know, when hurricanes come through, they survive like everybody else. They do the best they can. But now the area that they're in, some of you years ago will remember mud and, and potholes, and at least now it is a, a, a blacktop road or well, some kind of blacktop road at least that goes through there. Uh, but flooding is a problem. And uh, thankfully the church is blocked and it's tile floor, uh, those old pews that are there, I think this church helped maybe build those pews or something like that. I'm not sure, but those pews are solid two by fours and painted, and they just uh, they just stand the wo the weather, I guess. So that's a good thing. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yes, and it is a life-changing traveling experience. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Anything else? 
Listen, if you've got questions, you can always ask them a little bit later on. If you think you want to go, please don't hesitate to ask questions. Let us know. Uh, we'll be getting a date together as soon as we can, kind of a little, something a little more firm as to that, more than likely, just to kind of throwing this out. Uh, I liked how we traveled last time. And so last time we went, me and Mr. Charles, we left on Sunday afternoon after church, Sunday morning after church, and drove most of the way, I have to say most of the way, drove uh, almost all the way to Texas uh, there and uh, spent the night and got up the next morning, drove all the way through uh, down into Brownsville. We did stop at Bucky's, if that's a, you know, a favorite thing for any of you, both coming and going. You go by one and we did stop. You know, you got you to gotta have your beaver nuts or nuggets or whatever them things are called. I don't know. Uh, but we had a good time. And the Lord opened a lot of doors. And, uh, and again, I think for a ministry that has began, uh, I see a ministry that can continue and expand. And, uh, and may God bless all that we try to do for Him. I'm going to pray. We're going to dismiss. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask either tonight or in the next few days, few weeks. And uh, get your passport. Father, thank you for tonight. For those here with us, those at home watching, Father, just for this opportunity that we have to share what you have done through this, your church, in Mexico. And Father, I pray that you will continue, you, Father, will continue to, to use this church in mighty ways, both here at home and around the world. Father, may your will be done, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, all guys. We're dismissed.